you say, George? What did you have for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> I want what he's having. Pablo Espresso. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I'm glad somebody can clean out the rain and the weather. And, uh, it's always good to see the faces that I, I see you today. Um, we had a very interesting day. I was with uh, Captain Alex all day. And uh, we went to several meetings, including the clergy meeting. Uh, which is always uplifting uh, to go to that meeting and see how, how large the clergy council has gotten. So it's a very positive day for us. Um, I'm going to jump off now. A little bit later, uh, we're going to uh, talk about the upcoming election because we do have elections this year. This actually is the last day that you can qualify. And uh, I will tell you who's going to be on the election committee. Uh, somebody we all know and trust, and uh, we'll do that a little bit later, but right now I'm going to introduce the uh, dais. Um, our recording secretary, Kay Cardona, our assistant secretary, Andrea Siegel, our crime prevention officer, Tyrone Medeiros. You thought I was going to get it wrong. Okay? I know, we got it right this time. You were waiting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, community affairs, uh, Detective Jay Sturman. <laughs> and his partner, uh, Dave Laporte. <laughs> I'll introduce the big guy later. <laughs> uh, now, our, our district attorney representative, Jennifer Cruz, couldn't be here tonight. Uh, that uh, we have Rashawn Mori, and of course our Vice President, Sylvia Mazzella. I want you to know this, that we have um, section everything off. Uh, we're going to have committees, and this board is going to be comprised of committees, and different people will be chair chairmen of these committees. Now, they can ask for volunteers for their committee, and um, so don't hesitate to say, yeah, I'll join, or yeah, I'll be part of it. Um, everything from the breakfast to national, and uh, Silvio is uh, chair of the breakfast committee, and that's going to be in May, May 19th. I have to tell you something about that, though. Uh, for the first time in 15 years, and for 15 years, we been the only council that has not charged. But the way the economy is going and the way the dollars are coming in, last year uh, we didn't make uh, what we needed. So uh, from our, our volunteers and our donations. So we will be charging uh, this year for tickets as a group, as individuals, uh, and hopefully we will get uh, some donations uh, from some of the people that we're used to getting uh, funds from, but uh, this year will be a, a cost factor. So I hope that doesn't discourage anybody. We'll still have a great time. You'll be a little poor, but we're still <laughs> going to have a great time. Um, and now I'd like to introduce uh, the commanding officer, who I've gotten to know a little bit better every time we do something. Every time we go out, every time we see a situation, we talk about a situation, um, I get to know him a little bit more. And uh, my personal opinion, this is the kind of uh, commander in chief uh, that you need. This is the kind of uh, person that you need to uh, command something. Steady, non-opinionated, out to help the community in any way he can. He listens, he orders, and uh, to me, he's a perfect example of a commanding officer. Captain Alice. So uh, I've been to several meetings to, uh, today, and um, one of the things I'm, I'm constantly uh, saying in a lot of these meetings is uh, I'm very blessed to be the commanding officer of the Board of uh, The solid community that stands behind us, that questions us when we need to be questioned, um, and holds us accountable. But it's also working with us to make this command better. I have a, a 
I have my clergy behind us, supporting us, and guiding us, and I have tremendous cops, and I'll speak about one uh, tonight that's being honored, uh, that's out there working for you very hard. Um, so, when I look at 2017, honestly, I think everything's going to be perfect. I don't think we're ever going to take a shooting. I don't think we're ever going to get a civilian complaint. I think I'd be surprised if something happens in our command. Um, where in other commands, I'll be, I'll be straight with you. I wasn't surprised when something happened. There's a lot of violence in some of the commands that came from. Um, but in this command, I'm shocked when something happens. And that's a good thing to be shocked. Um, and so I expect um, to have a great year. And uh, so far this year, we're, we're having a great year. So I'll just go over some numbers real quick with you and, and I'll tell you about how 2017 is starting off. Um, so overall, we're down 9.3% in, in, in crime. Um, that's 26 less index crimes uh, this year than last year. Uh, we're seeing a decrease in total crime, 254 versus uh, 280. We're seeing decreases in grand larcenies, reports of like grand larcenies, 98 versus 102. We're seeing decreases in robberies, 49 versus 54. We're seeing decreases, a large decrease in uh, PLAs throughout the command, 12 versus 29. Where other commands, especially commands adjacent to us, are, are ex uh, experiencing large increases like 47. It's taking a lot of PLAs. We're not so. Uh, I attribute that to uh, a lot of enforcement. We're, we're gearing towards uh, the tow truck drivers. Um, from my experience and, and the experience of many, um, a lot of vehicles are stolen via tow trucks. Huh. Unlicensed uh, illegal tow trucks. They're hooked wow. up and gone. Uh, it's no more really those uh, shaped keys and, and, and stealing the data. So, um, wow. a large majority is done through those uh, tow trucks. So it's like organized, almost organized crime. So we've had a large decrease in GLAs. Shootings, we took that one shooting up in uh, East Chester uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, so we're one versus two. We had two last year this time. Now we only have one. Uh, we made an arrest on that shooting, by the way. Um, crimes in parks, we're also seeing a decrease. We have zero crimes in the park this year. That's something that downtown tracks and, and takes very seriously. So we dedicate uh, a lot of resources to the parks, and you'll see that. Um, when we go into the, the summer months, uh, you're going to see a lot of officers in the park. Uh, Long Pelham Park, where they're. Uh, the areas where we are struggling are uh, felony assaults, 55 versus 53, so we can two more felony assaults here today. Yeah. Burglaries, we're still struggling in that, 38 versus 35. Three more additional burglaries, and I contribute that mainly to we got hammered down in the, uh, the Van Ness area by those two individuals. They they counted probably for about 12 of those uh, burglaries. Yeah. Uh, we had made that arrest of Vince Rosario, we talked about him frequently. <laughs> Lo and behold, he's out. He just got out uh, two days ago. Wow. So I asked any Van Ness residents, lock your doors. His MO was walk through the front door, doors that were unlocked. Um, wow. But we're, the good news is we're looking at him for another one, and as soon as he steps out, we're going to rearrest him. Uh, we're struggling in housing, which is surprising to me since we have dedicated officers into each one of the housing developments, including, including uh, COOPS, we're all in housing, uh, crime 21 versus 18, seven of those 21 are DV related. And we're struggling in transit, which was a theme or uh, a topic of conversation at this latest ComStat, um, number five line specifically throughout the Bronx uh, is uh, experiencing uh, a spike in crime. Uh, specifically, we're getting hit up on uh, Gun Hill and Sexton. Uh, um, robberies at the. Um, right, Gun Hill and Sexton, right? That's Seymour. Uh, Seymour. I think they have it on the 61. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know why they have it at uh, the 61 scene, uh, Gun Hill and Sexton. But anyway, that line up there on the Gun Hill Road, we had a robbery uh, in a period, and also we just did a plan of the other day, which was borderline robbery as well. Uh, so be, be careful um, on a number five line. We're going to uh, dedicate more research, resources down there, work in conjunction with transit to uh, combat the, uh, the crime increase. We've got a seven versus one, which is a big increase for us. But other commands are experiencing an increase in transit. So it's going to be a focus of us. 
Um, good news, bad news. The command is doing exceptional. When we, when we talk about gun arrests here today, we're 14 versus 5. We have 14 gun arrests here today. There's 14 less guns uh, on the street uh, this year. Uh, the good news is we're making gun arrests. Bad news, there's guns out there. Um, I'll speak about one notable incident that just happened on, on, on the 28th day. Um, a couple of incidents have uh, been uh, high profile or in the media of late. We just had an elderly female, uh, 71 years of age, robbed inside uh, our building, 2215 Kruger, I think it was. Uh, she was returning home, a uh, female uh, perpetrator grabs her from behind and, uh, um, and robs her heart of the park. But she suffered like uh, injuries to her stomach. Um, she, she's fine other than that, but uh, sh shook up. We got video um, of, the, uh, of the incident. And we also got a pretty good photo of the perpetrator. Uh, we see her um, uh, running northbound on the White Line Road, and then it looks like she's just in the She might not be from the area. So we're having a hard time. Correct. So we have a to full flogger uh, distributor. Um, so we're having a hard time um, identifying her at this time. So we're asking for your assistance. Good news is uh, the female victim, she fought back. She grabbed uh, uh, a braid out of, uh, out of the perpetrator's hair and ripped it out of her hair. Uh, we have that. DNA. So we're hoping to get DNA evidence of that. And wow. That might maybe help uh, identify her. Either way, you're probably going to see it in the news either tonight or you might have saw it uh, yesterday. So that's where we're at in that, uh, um, in that instance. We don't have a pattern of female perpetrators solo robbing people. This was 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. So we don't have any uh, uh, patterns associated with that. Another problem that we're having in the command uh, that happened of late was you may or may not heard uh, Columbus High School's experience had a lot of problems. Year to date, we had three lockdowns outside of Columbus High School. Um, one was related to a greeting card left in the school that basically is possibly a student wrote. And basically said that they were shooting at the school. One. That caused the school to go into a temporary lockdown. When we deemed it safe, we reopened it. That investigation has gone nowhere. We haven't identified the student as of yet. Then we had two other incidents that were problematic. One outside um, the school on um, 127, we spoke about it previously. There were shots fired outside the school. Uh, caused the school to go into temporary lockdown. We ended up uh, uh, arresting a perpetrator for that, Martin Pena. But then, but then last week, um, I want to say it was on the 22nd, uh, school safety witnesses one student menacing a group of other students in the file. So by the time we get there, the perpetrator uh, runs away. And so did the victims. We have nothing, but we have the statement of the uh, school safety agent, and he identifies the individual as a former student. This guy Solomon Basu. So we ended up finding Solomon a couple of days later. We had, we ended up arresting him. We bring him in for the offense, and we don't have the gun recovered. We don't have victims, so the case wasn't really solid, and it was uh, uh, for the prosecution. So what happens is we stick to the plan. Anti-crime knows who this guy Solomon uh, Basu is. We focus in the area. We look, we look, we look. There's Solomon Basu outside the school yesterday. Um, based on observations, they stop Solomon. In his possession is a 22, uh, a loaded 22 um, uh, caliber firearm. He's subsequently uh, placed under arrest. He's great draw by uh, anti-crime. I'm mentioning it because this is a, this is an individual, sad, uh, troubled individual. Um, 16 years of age. Wow. Uh, he turned 16 uh, three weeks ago. Within that three weeks, he has three arrests. 